This program was made possible by Deborah Greenfield. I never say I want that. I never say that. I always go, Mr. Balanchine wants you to do it that way. And there's no other way. You know, that is what he wants. And I know that. Mr. B is the great choreographer George Balanchine. And Patricia Neary knows what Mr. B wants because in 1960, Balanchine handpicked her to be a dancer for New York City Ballet. I kind of miss a Renaissance period of ballet that I was brought up in, and I still feel uh, that I'd like to go back to the 60s. Pat's height and attacking style made her ideal for Balanchine ballets, and in this young dynamic dancer, the man widely considered to be the father of American ballet had found an inspired muse. In 1962, Pat became a soloist, and during the course of the next six years, she would perform almost every ballerina role in the Balanchine repertoire. If you've ever danced for Mr. Balanchine, or you've experienced his classes, or his choreography, uh, you, you never come back, I call it. Balanchine created two roles just for Pat, Variations and Rubies, a section from the classic ballet Jewels. But working so closely with this genius could be difficult. He was complex, demanding, his actions often ego fueled I also found the way he could destroy uh, principal dancers very fascinating. As a choreographer, Balanchine was pushing the boundaries of creativity and dance. With New York City Ballet, he was staging innovative productions with exceptional dancers, the likes of which had never been seen before. It took the world by storm, and the crowd soon followed. Stars were being born. In the 60s, he brought to New York Eric Brune to guest with the company with Maria Tallchief. And I found this fascinating because we were so excited to see these, this team kind of, he, was, he put them together, there was enormous publicity, and all of a sudden what happened was people were coming only to see them dance. But Balanchine was not a fan of big stars in ballet. He was adamant that his choreography was the star, not the individuals who danced it. Balanchine said the only reason they should come is to see my choreography. To prevent his stars from shining too brightly, before a show debuted, he would often avoid announcing which dancers were performing. Uh, Balanchine did create names, but one of the problems in his way of thinking, and I have to be very honest with you, was it got out of hand for him. A 1964 Time magazine profile of New York City Ballet introduced Pat as a Balanchine principal dancer. She had become known as the technician due to her precise, whippet quick movements. Balanchine boasted in the article that any of his tall young protégés could be prima ballerinas in any other company. He used to say he liked tall dancers. I don't think he liked, I mean, I think he loved tall people because he could see better. He could see their legs going up or their movement or whatever they were doing, you know, their extension. But in, in reality, uh, if a small person dances big, he would love them. But he liked big dancing. In other words, he wanted to see everything you did. You shouldn't dance small in his ballets. At the time, Balanchine was defying tradition by replacing his experienced soloists like Maria Tallchief with much younger girls like Pat. His reasoning was complicated. His love life was colorful, and over the years he would marry five of his ballerinas and have affairs with countless others. It made for a challenging atmosphere if you were working closely with Mr. B. In 1967, Pat knew she had to move on. When I actually left, he was more concerned that I would go to the press because uh, Maria Tallchief had just been to the press shortly before that, explaining that she was leaving because of me, Suzanne, Mimi, all, all these uh, young dancers, and she didn't like it that he treated her in such a way. In part two, we'll reveal how Pat's decision was the start of a new chapter in her life, one she'd never expected to write.